Hi, I'm Bruce, and uh, welcome to the Baptronics Mountain Labs here in Colorado. And uh, today we're taking a look at a PTS-160 frequency synthesizer. These units are fabulous units. There's, uh, oh, at least three in the series that I can remember. We have the PTS-160, the 250, and the 500. I've had the pleasure of working with all three. Uh, the 160 here, uh, as you can see, we have um, 10 dials on the front. And uh, with those dials, we can dial select up to within a tenth of a hertz. Any frequency between 100 kilohertz up to 160 megahertz. With resolution down to a tenth of a hertz. And just as an example of that, right now I've got... Uh, uh, a hundred thousand hertz dial selected on the uh, on the unit, and I added one hertz at the end. I've got one hundred thousand and one hertz. And if we take a look at my counter right now, we see we have a hundred point zero zero one kilohertz on my counter. If I dial select to uh, from one to two hertz, we're going to see that we have a hundred thousand point zero zero two hertz. Let's go ahead and do a, uh, a tenth of a hertz on the end of that, and we, we should see that we have 100,000.0021 hertz. And that's give or take a count. It's standard. So uh, we also uh, are amplitude adjustable. We have a, a dB meter right here in the front. Both voltage and dB are shown. We can control the output. From the front here. So you're both frequency and voltage selectable uh, from the output. When I got the unit, uh, it wasn't functioning, uh, and it was written up that way as it wasn't functioning. But it didn't take me very long to realize that the reason the unit wasn't functioning was that it was missing an internal oscillator. So I've added an internal oscillator, a 10 megahertz uh, OCXO, um, it's made by Morian, um, I think it's an MV102A, we'll double check that, but uh, uh, produces a beautiful 10 megahertz signal, very stable, frequency adjustable via the uh, adjustment hole in the back, uh, it's on its own power supply, uh, the, when the unit is plugged in, the oscillator is automatically running and heating. And it'll stay running and heating, uh, and then you, all you have to do is flip on the front power, and then the rest of the unit will be working, and, and it, there's no warm-up time to worry about. Uh, if you uh, decide that you're not going to use the unit for a long period of time, just simply unplug the cord, and that will turn off the... Uh, the power to the oscillator. Uh, you also have a choice uh, from a from a rear. Let's see if we can turn this around here. From a rear connector here, you can feed in an external 10 megahertz signal, say from a uh, bench oscillator on your uh, master bench oscillator. And you just simply slide this switch to the external position and the unit would then run off of your, your bench. We're in the internal position right now and producing our 10 megahertz within the in, inside. There is a, um, a rear um, output, uh, but the, since the front panel output is, is being used right now, the rear is disconnected. That can be reconnected internally if you wish, uh, lose the front connection and you could have the rear uh, simply by swapping the, um, uh, the threaded connectors and, and the, uh, uh, the leads inside. So we also have a um, remote control unit on this. Uh, uh, you can run this uh, from uh, computer control if you um, are familiar with such things. I am not. The unit was given a nice uh, 
paint job to finish it off so that we uh, it looks as nice as it performs. We'll I'll open it up and give you a look in the inside in a moment. Okay, well we've removed the top cover, and uh, what we what we see inside is uh, we have some eleven shielded containers here, which contain the uh, what they call the DM and DMA modules. We have two more in the back, actually a uh, total of 14 because you include this back unit here too. Here's your remote control board, power supply, and then here's our uh, OCXO uh, 10 megahertz oscillator. The workmanship is all first class on this unit. Everything is shielded. Uh, the um, uh, all of the signals are routed through many conduits, uh, uh, so that everything is shielded heavily. Well, here we have a, t a look at the underside of the PTS 160. We've got the cover removed. Uh, once again, you can see the AC input, fuse, power supply, remote control board. Here's their crystal controlled oscillator, oven controlled. Um, and you notice we use the um, micro conduits for all of the signals, uh, signal runs. If you wanted to, uh, to change to a rear mounted um, output then you would replace the front panel output here just unscrew it pull it off and then put this back on there and then you're going out the rear and uh, you get a look at the workmanship it's beautiful workmanship very sturdy all of the uh, printed circuit pads uh, are mounted directly to uh, metal frame and uh, and then we have all our all of our 14 uh, DM and DME uh, boxes attached to that front panel uh, uh, DB meter. So beautiful unit, beautifully made, beautifully functional. Okay, well here we are taking a look at the bottom side of the unit and as you can see I've attached four rubber feet adhesive feet to the bottom of the unit so we have uh, something to rest on and not skin up the, uh, the the new paint job just not too many of us are uh, have a rack mount system in our shop most of us have it set on a tabletop so Rubber feet seem to make a sen make sense. Okay, well we're connected up again, and um, we're going to do a little functional test. Right now, I have the low end frequency is 100 kilohertz that this thing is rated at. It actually produces lower signals, but as far as its uh, rating goes, it's rated at 100 kilohertz on the low end. So we have that chosen, and then in order to uh, just give you an example of the power of this uh, particular unit I've chosen to have 100.1234k that's giving us 100k down to a tenth of a hertz and that I'm reading four tenths of a hertz on the low wind so let's just see how we do on our frequency meter 100.1234 kilohertz right on the nose that's using the internal oscillator. So we have separate oscillators running my uh, uh, my bench frequency meter and running this unit. So right now they are calibrated uh, together. They uh, are producing accurate frequencies. They're in agreement with each other. That's a beautiful thing. Uh, let's go ahead and, uh, and run her up in frequency and see how she does on the high end. This is the low. Okay, let's... Uh Let's try and take this thing up to its um, maximum frequencies. Uh, right now we are at the 100 kilohertz. Um, let's take it up to, see, a megahertz. There's megahertz. 
There's 10 megahertz. 10 megahertz. 100 megahertz. And 100 megahertz. Let's do 160, that's the, or 159.99, 159, And there we go, 159.999999 kilohertz, so it's 159,999,999 hertz and uh, we didn't even include the uh, tenth in order to see the tenth we'd have to kick ourselves up another uh, another notch but we got the 160 megahertz without a problem and then anything in between what if we wanted two zero twenty million zero 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 and then 123 hertz at the end so 20 million with 123 hertz at the end of it. There it is. 20 million and 123 hertz. It's actually 20,000.123 kilohertz. So just shove the 123 up and you've got everything in hertz. 20 million and 123 hertz. That's pretty fantastic. And that, this unit can do that. So anything that you need to simulate to within a fraction of a hertz between 100 kilohertz 160 megahertz you can do it and uh, let me point out right now we're on the we're locally we're running all from the front panel here if you were running from the computer you'd be your remote light would be on you'd be running from it okay and uh, along with that I'll give you the manuals uh, for the unit on a uh, CD and uh, you're off and running. So thanks for listening and happy bidding.